Testing. Hashtags. YouTube. Interwebs. Sorry. set up. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> so my name is Martin Anderson. Uh, I'm CFA's Digital Media Manager. So I've been at uh, CFA for almost 10 years now, 10 years in October. So I've been uh, with CFA right through the whole journey uh, of social media. Because really 10 years ago when I started at CFA, social media pretty much didn't exist. It certainly wasn't that... Um, Pervasive, pervasive as it is today. The idea of this session is to uh, just really, it'll mainly be qu question and answers from you guys uh, because the feedback the committee, the organizing committee had was that people just wanted some practical advice uh, on how to do social media and some of the concerns, questions that people might have. Let's introduce the, my fellow panelists here. We've got Stefan from SES. Big round of applause. Yay! Thanks. And we've got Ryan, who's one of my colleagues at CFA, and he's also up by five years. Good night. So these two, a lot of the questions um, that you may have probably relate to your brigades uh, and so on. So Ryan's probably the expert in that. He runs a, a very successful brigade page. I'm more focused on the, the state level um, social media stuff. Um, first of all, I thought it would be interesting to know, <coughs> just to get an idea of in the room, of how many of you have brigade Facebook pages, or how many of you use social media uh, as part of your community engagement? That's great. That's a good, good lot of people. I mean, even even if you know a couple of years ago, I uh, would have you know a lot less people doing that. We have seen a big surge uh, in the past past couple of years. Been a big surge in the number of brigades setting up uh, pages at, at CFA. I think what we'll do first of all is hand over to Stefan. Stefan's going to just give a give you a brief on the uh, the situation of social media at SES. Stefan, huzzah! Uh, hi everyone, thank you for having me. I am, as advertised, Stefan Deladovic. I'm the manager of emergency management communications at SES, uh, and we look after social media and other things. Uh, so, is there anybody here who's here to sort of? look at this from base principles in terms of how do I get started on social media? Yeah, awesome. Uh, the policy process is pretty simple in terms of if you as a unit uh, want to get involved in social media, if you want to set up a Facebook page or a Twitter account or anything, uh, you can just contact Emergency Management Communications and we can help you out. Uh, and then from there we have a policy to sort of set the direction of sort of what, what you should do and what you can't do and that sort of thing. And there's also a page on the extranet which has all the cool photos and that sort of stuff. So the idea is to make it super easy. And if you haven't done it before, we're pretty happy for you to just call us and say, I would like a Facebook page and we can make a Facebook page and hand it to you and high five and everything. The broad philosophy, I suppose, of uh, social media at sort of that state level of SES that we look after, we have a state, sort of the Victoria SES Facebook page. Uh, which we run, which pipes the warnings from our sort of automated warning system straight onto the page. Uh, and we also use that to sort of promote what uh, units and the service is doing around the state. Uh, and then on Twitter, we have a sort of SES news one, which is the human being typing about it, saying this is the cool stuff they're up to today. And then we have a separate warnings Twitter account, which people can subscribe to, which is just fed by that sort of one source robot thing where whenever we put out a flood warning or a storm warning or an earthquake warning it will automatically post that to that account because on Twitter people are pretty cool to just sort of scroll through and use it as a sort of news delivery update service whereas on Facebook we're really looking to sort of engage with the community and hang out with them and stuff I suppose the vibe is you know primarily as in all things we're hoping that people will use our Facebook page as a forum in which to get warnings and that they will like the page 
engage with it so that when there's an emergency and we need to talk to them and we've got really important stuff to say, they'll be there and they'll be listening and they're involved. Obviously the way that we do that, I think we heard Dan talk yesterday about this idea that if you go out to the community and go, we would like to talk to you about important safety messaging and the flood warning sometime, they're probably going to go, yeah, cool story, bro, and go off and do something else. But if we create sort of a lot of Facebook pages which talk about who we are and how awesome we are, and we are super awesome uh, at a unit level, there's lots of cool stuff happening. We sort of, I don't want to say trick people, but we bring them in and say, look, hang out with us. We're a part of your community. Let's be cool. And then they're there. And then when we need to talk to them, we've got an audience. Success. Thanks, Stefan. Round of applause. No, that's okay. Um, yeah, so just a quick, quick rundown on, on CFA. Similar sort of setup at a state level. Uh, as Stefan says, I'm sure you're, you're probably aware of the, the warnings are all automated through the one source, one message warning system. And we monitor uh, social media Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, but also some out of hours monitoring as well. And there's 24 7 support there. So if the river is a major issue uh, that you encounter with social media that you become aware of, through your, um, through your duty officer, you can contact uh, the CFA media person who will contact the social media person and we can provide some support and advice if you ever need that. Um, at CFA, how many brigades, roughly, are we aware of? Have I think there's about 260. 260? Yeah. yeah. So we're about 260 brigades that we're aware of. Um, there's new ones starting up all the time. Basically, the process is as long as you have uh, the go-ahead from your brigade management team, um, there's no reason we, we would encourage you uh, to get on social media and start using it to engage with the community. So I remember even that I was doing um, state uh, social media for the, for the state, but it still took me a couple of years to persuade my own brigade management team um, to set up a, a brigade Facebook page. So there, ha there was a bit of reluctance in the past. And it's very much just dependent on uh, you know, who you have in your brigade. If you have people who are confident in social media and who are also able to persuade the brigade management team that it's not so scary um, and that's a really useful tool to use, um, to use for community engagement. Are there, one, of the, one of the big resources that um, we've set up uh, just a couple of years ago is a, there's a closed Facebook group. <coughs> Excuse me, a closed Facebook group on uh, for social media managers, and we have over 600 uh, people signed up that closed uh, Facebook group, which is a really good resource. Hopefully, some of you are on it. Uh, it's a really good resource for uh, asking questions, getting advice, and getting support. We also have uh, procedures and guidelines available on CFA Internet. Um, there's also guidelines on the news and CFA news and media site on the use of photos and videos, which often. Um, we also have uh, a draft policy that's, that's um, just waiting to be approved by the board, so hopefully in the next few months uh, you'll, we'll have a new updated uh, policy as well to provide some guidance. That's more related to um, you know, the sort of legal aspect of social media and the potential risks and um, disciplinary things that can happen if you're silly and you do silly things. But I think often those concerns are, are um, overestimated. I mean, we've been running uh, social media and CFA with 300 and almost 390,000 people following and reaching millions of people and um, very rarely do we come across uh, any major issues that we have to deal with every now and again we have a few to deal with. So I think, um, are there any questions? Uh, I'll start taking some questions. Great, good, so, yeah, a few hands going up, that's good. Um, yeah, look, it's about 20% of what all of you guys said this morning that I really don't understand. I don't, for one, know what a closed Facebook is. Um, there's an assumption with the whole social uh, media concept that everybody understands the jargon. It's the jargon that puts me off. I don't know what most of the things refer to. I don't know what the implications of those things are and the significance of those things are and the impact that they're going to have on the, the people that I do know. I can identify my audience, but 
the, it's the assumption that everybody has this type of device or this type of thing. I, I need to come here to learn um, some of the wording and understand what these words do, the significance of those on the people that I'm trying to uh, communicate with and, and not, uh, not let you assume any longer that I know uh, more than about 20%, and I'm an intelligent person, of, of what this whole subject's about. So Yeah, no, that's you, great. That's, that, and that's exactly what this session is about. So thanks for, for calling us up on that. Certainly no, um, no measure of your intelligence if you know the social media lingo or not. So yeah, apologies for that. Um, but that's exactly what this session is for and exactly what the questions and answers are for to start. That's all. I think that's a good one for Ryan, first of all. So just, just taking that point about closed Facebook groups. Uh, Ryan, can you, do you want to give a bit of a, a rundown on uh, what Facebook pages are and what groups and open and closed and that sort of thing? Yeah, so basically a, a Facebook page is public. It's public, everyone will see it, um, and there's nothing you can do to, to stop the public from viewing it. If you want something more private, which is a group, um, you can make your own group, set it to private, and you could have only your... Uh, brigade or unit members part of that group so you can discuss anything and it's a private forum for you to talk about anything that you might need to talk about training or turnouts or, or anything and everything um, so a, a, a page is what you want to do and what you want to set up for the community because they will be able to view everything that you post um, whereas that group is something more for uh, internal use and Martin mentioned the group that we have for social media managers and certainly uh, if you have Facebook I welcome you to join the group and it's a good space for people who don't understand uh, you, know, very, you know people who understand very little about Facebook and even those people who, who uh, have it nailed down can go in there ask questions um, talk about the issues they face and uh, ask advice from over 630 something members that we have in there. Does that help? <laughs> so the, I mean, taking it back to the, sorry Stefan, to, to the very basic level, I mean the reason that we do social media is that it is, so many people nowadays do use it. It's a really effective both in um, actually the number of people you can get to and also in cost, because it costs nothing really, to um, set up a page and engage with people. That if you're providing content that people find useful, if you're providing information that people find useful, you'll find that it, through the very nature of it, it'll be shared and a lot of people uh, will get that information. So if you think, you know, the effort that goes into, and obviously we have to keep doing all the face-to-face -face things and everything else that we do, but if you think the effort that goes into arranging a meeting or doing some leaflet drops or things like that, if you've got a, a good setup on social media, you can reach those people with that information, you know, very quickly and very easily. Um, so that's you know at the very basic level uh, what the benefits of social media are. Yeah. So I uh, before I worked at SES, I was a and I first encountered social media through that, and newspapers were super terrified of social media um, because it's it's just everybody has a uh, newspaper now so it, it's helpful to think of social media there is uh, it's difficult to talk about without the jargon it's sort of like everything we do in emergency services um, but don't uh, stress out if someone talks about hashtags and it, and it feels really weird just uh, Facebook for example is a it's a channel to talk through it's like the the phone or the newspaper or something so as a brigade or a unit, you can create a Facebook page, which is effectively your sort of front page of your newspaper, which you control and are the editor of, and can just go, here's what I want to tell my community today. And that's really valuable specifically for the work uh, that you guys are doing out in your communities, where you are a member of that team who has their best interest in heart and is able to talk to them in a, in a way that I can't because you know them and you're part of them. So it is sort of cutting out the middleman of everything else because you're able to just write, hey everybody, we're having a meeting at 10 o'clock and it'd be really cool if you all came. And instead of having to go uh, to the newspaper and convince the journalist to write that and they write it in three days 
and then they put it out, but they sort of misspell your name and everything. You have the ability to just put it out on the internet. And all Facebook and Twitter, it's all just everybody publishes whatever they want and everybody else uh, signs up to read the stuff that everybody they like publishes and then they can comment on it and if they really like it, they can share it to everybody that they follow and in that way, information propagates throughout the thing. So if that's the concept in your brain, everything else can sort of flow from that and I would encourage you, if you're interested in social media, um, but just sort of don't understand it or you haven't had experience with it because it's, it is a really weird esoteric thing if you've never seen it before. Uh, just create, you can create a public profile, you could create it in not even your name, just fill out the basic stuff, follow a couple of people. Uh, it, they're, they're really set up to just take you through the prompts and stuff. So you can do it sort of privately and in a, in a way that will not impinge your personal reputation or anything. Uh, and just click all the buttons, you can't break anything. And that's, that really is the best way to start learning the lingo of the thing. Okay, we'll take a few more questions. I, I, I encourage you to um, just, you know, even if it's specific questions about what is a hashtag, what is a Facebook group, any of those sorts of questions, very happy to take. So, could I, is, is that on? Could I just first of all uh, challenge the assumption that everyone's on Facebook? You know, this is a way of getting in touch with everyone. I mean, I live in a fairly small rural community with a high proportion of retirees and the people that we want to get to aren't on Facebook. But putting that comment aside now, um, we, have a, we started off, thought we were very adventuresome having a, a website and now we have a Facebook page. Is there any independent value in websites these days? As a, as a, a, a what, what are the relative merits of websites versus Facebook pages? Uh, well, I think it's about, um, you know, people, the problems I see a lot with people on social media is, as you say, the idea of just saying, well, social media is a big deal, so I need to get on social media, so let's do it, and then in six months go, well, no one's listening, and we don't really, we're not, what are we trying to do? So I think, so as I said, social media is a, a really powerful channel these days, but you are correct in that it's the same as everything else, it's the same as the newspaper and the phone and stuff. You're never gonna get everybody with one thing. Sort of from our level, we're looking at putting things out on every possible channel just to try and get everybody. But uh, if you start from what are the messages that we're trying to communicate to our community and then roll it out from there. So social media is really good if you want to be conversing with people. They're really good to build trust uh, and to put sort of a, a human personality on the message that you've got, which in this uh, sphere of work that we're here to sort of talk about today is really valuable because you're able to sort of go, this is me, I'm a person, uh, I'm giving my time to keep you safe. That's a really valuable message. Websites uh, probably have more valuable in terms of presenting uh, more sort of nuanced, longer messages or sort of static information. So if your unit has sort of standing appointments or information that never changes and that sort of thing. Um, but have a look at sort of SES and CFA both have pretty um, like big state level websites with a lot of information on them. So have a look at those and you would probably, you know, you would only need a website if there was stuff not covered there that you really wanted to hang out. Like if you're just looking to say, you know, we exist and we're doing good work and here's what we want you to know, you could probably do that on Facebook with the added advantage that they own all the infrastructure and you don't have to web design it and that sort of thing. Yeah, I think that, and that's a really good question. The, and it's something I've been thinking about that the problem with websites are that they're, they're, they're quite difficult to maintain. Um, and often, like we see all the time, uh, you, you might have someone in your brigade who's a bit of a whiz on the web and they'll set up a website, but then a couple of years later they've left the brigade and the website's sitting there and it's so out of date. Um, you know, social media is much easier in a way. You know, if you get on there and you, you figure out how to use it, it's really quite simple to use and simple to maintain. Um, much easier than a website. So unless, as Stefan said, I mean, at my brigade, the website is mainly, you need to think about what the website's purpose is. The website at, at our brigade is mainly for members and it's you know, meeting minutes and things like that. So that's sort of uh, admin of the brigade. It's a good, can be a good uh, place to do that. But as regards engaging the community and getting community information out there, 
I'm not sure that you want to do that on a brigade website because you've got your social media and as Stefan said, you've got all of the, the community safety messaging and the resources available on this, the state website. So personally, I don't think websites are worth the effort anymore, to be honest. Yeah, definitely. Um, from a brigade standing, uh, uh, yeah, Upway has a website. It's actually quite embarrassing. It's really old. It's just got basic static messages, um, you know, our address, our phone number, and, and a few other bits and pieces. Um, and for us, it's not really a concern because our Facebook page is updated daily or every couple of days. Um, when someone from the community has a question, they message us or comment and we get back to them as soon as we can. Um, so yeah, a, a website is good for static information, but as far as actually engaging your community, it's about social media. So if you've got something, great, leave it up. But personally, from a brigade or unit level, I would put that focus into, into Facebook. Hi guys, I've just got uh, three quick questions. What's the name of your closed Facebook group? You've mentioned it a number of times. Have you mentioned the CFA name? Social Media Managers. CFA Social Media Managers. I think we should all write that down. And I believe the link is actually <coughs> facebook.com slash groups slash CFA Social. I hope um, I'm right. And my second, if you just search for CFA Social Media, yep. if you search for CFA Social Media, it should come up in the search. Uh, one of the problems that we've got is that uh, our Facebook was set up a while ago. Uh, a couple of our administrators have gone now. How do we uh, get our administration back? So it's a more technical question. And it's also a closed group at the moment. Can you open that up immediately to a public group? Okay, so if you've got a, a group is a group, and, it, and it, it, if it, it, basically you don't have a page. So you want to start and you, you want to get a page, you want to start from scratch and get a page because that's what the community will interact with. Keep your group for an internal thing. Um, we hear often about um, members starting pages and, and groups and then moving on and no one having any access. Um, unfortunately, you really need to try and get hold of those people and ask them very nicely um, that, that they add you. So. Um, we can go through all the all, all the boring details afterwards as far as how you add people to become an administrator on a page or a group. Um, but if you cannot at all get hold of those people, unfortunately, you would need to start from scratch. It's always a good idea to have at least a couple of people as administrators on your page in case one person does go or, or it takes the head staggers and <laughs> starts doing things you don't want them to, um, to do. So, even if someone is not uh, that active in the page, someone who you trust is well trusted and, and is likely to be around for a while, you know, isn't likely to be disappearing off anywhere, it's always good to have that sort of person on the page as well as your, you know, your uh, 17 year old recent recruit is in the social media, I wouldn't just leave it all in the hands of that person. Um, it's yeah, it's important to keep in mind that these, uh, like, the, you get the quiet life from Facebook for example because they own all they'll update it and do all that sort of stuff, but it is also their architecture. So if you, if all the admins go away, um, you will have to talk to Facebook, which can be uh, a bit arduous. So I'd encourage you yeah, to have two or three backups, if at all possible. Good question, we're going to a few more questions along the front here, if we can come along after this one. Is it, is it on? Hi, the name's Simon from uh, Emerald Fire Station. This can be a sort of two-part question. The first part's going to be a sort of a bit of a internal um, um, advertising, and the second will sort of ask you what's the best way of doing it. Uh, I'm going to start off with sort of a minute from my side. A lot of you would have seen the, um, some diaries actually on your chairs when you first got here. These are the, uh, are the fundraising community safety diaries that Emerald came up with. Now, we're trying to get um, all the brigades to like us or share us if I need to help on their Facebook sites, so the more they sell of these, the more money the actual each brigade makes. Now at the moment, the way that this sort of works, I know it's a little bit advertising, I'm stealing your space, but the way that this works, the diaries are $20, and uh, whoever the general public buys these, they will nominate which brigade they want their $5 donations to go to. So the more people that sort of share this on their Facebook, the more that we sell, the more you make. Now, I mean, we've got at the moment sort of the, the, the Emerald CFA, um, Facebook, a bit of advertising. Did you get that on the live <laughs> <laughs> Well done. But, but, but I mean, seriously, what is the best, I'm, I'm new at Facebook, what is the best way of trying to sort of share this all around Victoria so all brigades 
are trying to sort of share the same message? Well, the first thing that popped into my head would, would be going into our group and saying, look guys, we've got this offer, share it around to, to your communities and let them know that if they buy one of these fantastic diaries for $20, you'll receive $5. Um, another way, or, you know, on top of, would be to contact news and media and we could put um, you know, an email or some you know, communication out to as many brigades as possible because uh, it is a great, great idea to fundraise. Um, and then on top of that as well would be to run Facebook advertising from your own brigade page, um, targeting people in, you, you know, you could stick with your own uh, area of Emerald or the Hills, Melbourne, Victoria, the, or the whole country. Um, Facebook advertising is a, a really effective way of, of um, getting a message out there. It's really economical. Um, but again, I would probably go through all of those boring details with you Afterwards, I'll come and see you afterwards. Thank you. Great. I think also it's all about the content at the end of the day. If you're if you're sharing stuff with people that they want to share, it, it, so it's if you want to think about, you know, do, can you do a video? Are there photos that you could share that might uh, catch people's attention? So it's all about trying to get some content that will actually grab people's attention and they'll share it on social media. That's really the, the core trick to it. Yeah, and I would echo that from uh, sort of a broad SES perspective in terms of like we've got a good network, uh, like a really supportive network of SES units having Facebook pages. Uh, and if someone does something really awesome, it tends to get shared around to sort of half a dozen of them. And we as sort of the Shangri-La awesome goal of the state SES page is to be sharing sort of a digest of all the coolest stuff that's happening at a unit level. That's, that's the best content that exists. So it is sort of that infuriatingly simple but complex thing of just do really cool stuff and present it well and people will go, oh, interesting, click. That's the thing. Just a query uh, it's on a slightly different note. As a uh, incident controller, um, I've got some reservations about uh, social media. It's got its good points and I use it myself a little bit. And there's no problems with the official uh, Facebook pages and so on, such as CFA, SES, Vic, Poll. My big concern, though, is the unofficial uh, sites that are established in just about every country town, I guess, um, where someone can set up a website and then when an emergency develops, and we've had it happen in our area a number of times, uh, there's information put on this particular website that is totally incorrect. And no one, there, there's no real way of controlling it. Um, now, as an example, when the 11 year old boy Luke went missing on the edge of Lake Eildon at Easter this year, there's a, um, a Facebook page established to support the family and the search, and there is a lot of misleading information. Uh, published on there, which caused a lot of local problems. Um, we had some fires in the area back prior to Christmas, and again, there was uh, false information put on these particular uh, pages. Um, what can we do about this? Um, see, the problem is anyone can go and establish a Facebook page. You know, they can call it whoop whoop local news or something and then uh, it becomes well known and people look at it and uh, it just escalates and escalates and the people that are controlling the situation has got no, very little control about what's happening. You know, it's, it's, it's a common uh, issue uh, and you're quite right, there, there is no way that we have of controlling it as in, you know, in the past I think my, people's minds tend to go, we'll contact Facebook or we'll tell YouTube to take that video off or we'll tell them to shut that page down. But, you know, we don't have that control. So the only control that we do have is being really active on social media so that people know where the official sources are and also monitoring. So monitoring, being aware of what other community pages do set up. And working with them, where, you know, generally these community pages, quite a lot of examples in Tasmania and all, other places where communities have filled a gap because there wasn't official social media happening. And generally, they're good, they're good intentioned. I mean, their intentions are to share information and do the right thing. So if we are aware of that through our monitoring, and we have 
a cred credibility and standing in a large community already built up on social media as the official uh, channels, then we can influence that conversation. We can get into those channels. We can share the correct information. We can correct misinformation. Uh, and that's really it. And it is an effective way of doing it um, because people can see. It, it, it's like, um, I mean, every, every click and share and person that follows you is like a vote saying, yes, I trust this person. So if we've built up that credibility, you can correct, get misinformation corrected uh, quite easily, but it does require uh, you to be active in social media and to be monitoring and to be comfortable in a, 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 with getting into the conversation and correcting information. But as I said, very rare occasions do you ever hear about uh, groups or people deliberately trying to share misinformation. It's normally well-intentioned. So if you can educate them and, and show them where to get the correct information, normally that will, will help. Is that does that help a bit? Yeah. At the end of the day, there is there's nothing we can do about people going on and sharing information unless they're breaking any laws, which they generally aren't. Quick question. I to say up front that I've got an IT background. Um, you talk about social media, but all I've heard so far is Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. Is it the only solution? No, it's not. Um, well, can we have some other words? <laughs> we have Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, Tumblr, Snapchat. It's, um, it's the biggest one. So I mean, and that's why we do talk about it. It is, no, it is I, by, I by and far the biggest and the best channel for engaging people at the minute. Okay, that's that's really the answer I think I was after. Okay, yeah. if, if it's the best way of going. Yeah, there's no, there's no real question at the minute. It's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram are the three uh, channels that really we see is worth investing time in. Uh, at a state level, you know, because we need to be ahead of the game, we, we'll be keep keeping an eye on the other channels that spring up and other things that are happening. There's, you know, there's all sorts of, you go through a hundred different things that are happening, but until they start to get some traction and people start following them, there's not a lot of, uh, it's not worth us spending the time on it. So, Facebook number one, Twitter probably number two, and Instagram as the third channel. And even Instagram as number three is more of just a, a, a fun way to connect with your community. It's, it's certainly not um, a space that you would use for warnings and advice and things like that. Um, but yeah, I, I guess the focus really here is Facebook because it, it takes a lot of time to manage social media properly. No one has a lot of time, so focus on Facebook. If you suddenly found that you had a lot of time to devote, then you would, you would move into those other areas. Yeah, it's certainly the experience at SES that um the, the majority of people who are having the discussions that we want to be involved in are doing it on Facebook at the moment. So, and given the sort of finite resources, we're uh, putting a lot of efforts into Facebook. We do Twitter as well, but sort of a secondary channel. Um, and it sort of goes back to the, you know, figure out the message and then where's the best forum to do it, which is why Facebook's become a thing. But if in a year's time everyone dumps Facebook and goes exclusively Snapchat or something, uh, which, don't ask me what that is, I'm not really sure, but uh, then we would move there. But certainly um, at a unit or brigade level, if you, like we talk a lot about Facebook because, uh, yeah, given our experiences, um, we would suggest that's probably the default in terms of if you didn't, if you wanted to do social media but didn't have a compelling reason to not do another one, that's probably going to be the most traction. Um, but if you decided that your message was something else to a, a different, now, if you were looking to talk exclusively to a very young audience or something, you might look at sort of Instagram or something else. Just to give you an outline on the, on the stats, so I know you're quite right, not everyone's on Facebook, but a lot, a very high percentage of people are on Facebook. I haven't seen any stats recently, but and the, the, the number of people that use Facebook, of all the age groups, this idea that it's just young people doing it is nonsense, and it, it might have been at the start, but it's not now. So there's a whole, our demographics are about 66% female, and spread over all age groups on our page. So uh, yes, there there would be a, a, a more people in urban areas generally using it, um, people, and mainly because of the, you've got the good internet connections and so on. Um, but well, every demographic, every area, there are people using it. And a lot of the times, you don't even. It's not even about if you're using it. A lot of people get it for the parents get information from their kids who are on Facebook. So during emergencies. It's about getting the information out there in whatever channel we can. Um, a story the Queensland Police tell during the cyclones in 2011 was that 
uh, you know, if the, the elderly lady sheltering under a table listening to the wind up radio and getting the news from the radio stations. But the radio stations were getting the information from Twitter, from the Twitter that Queensland police were putting out. So in reality, that lady listening to the radio under a table has never has no idea what Twitter is, but she's getting her information. <laughs> Um, Wait after. He will uh, always love you, man. As you can see, a media emotional connection. I wasn't connection. expecting that. Uh, wasn't expecting such love. Um, yeah, no, so, no, I uh, think yeah, so, so it's not. So even if you're not on social media, there's benefits, and even if you're, you know, all of your community isn't on social media, you know, there's also lots of stories of. You know, people in emergency areas are not aware of what's happening, not having the information, and relatives even international, you know, children who are in who are overseas, phoning their parents and saying, oh, do you know there's a fire down your road? And they went, what? They don't know about it. So that Facebook, you know, that social media, you may not be on social media, but you'll benefit from that information being shared. Can we put a mic back here? Hi, I'm Kelly Stoner from Rye CFA. Um, my question is, you talked earlier about the automated prompting of warnings onto your Facebook page. Is that just the state page? Is that something that can be set up to a local brigade page? The reason I'm asking is my biggest fear of um, sharing any type of warning information at any stage on a local brigade page is my availability and my brigade's availability to update that. I work um, four days a week and I'm at work and not on social media, so... Oh, and we... Uh, so, yes, from an SES perspective, we uh, do not ask any unit or even our regional officers to publish warnings, because, as you say, you are sort of making a promise to the community which is really hard to keep. I would not expect anybody to uh, have the capacity to share every relevant warning as it came up in real time, because, um, you know, I don't do that. I make a robot do it for me, you know. So we... Uh, if, if units want to develop their sort of local uh, online presence into a bit of a warnings plan, like if they want to be talking about that stuff, we like encourage them to share it um, from the state page because it does, um, like it continues that link of information. So if someone comes to your page and sees this warning, you can build context around it to say, hey, here's a warning, here's why you should know about it. Um, and you can be very clear of like, we're sharing this, but it comes from there because um, certainly our, our messaging yeah. around this space is uh, you can follow SES on Facebook to find warnings and you're right, there's a risk there that people go, oh cool, I'll find my local Facebook page and I won't get warning. One of the um, disclaimers that we have even on our page is, you know, and you should have on all your brigade pages, is that this page is not monitored 24-7 and that for warnings and emergency information, direct them to uh, probably not the, the emergency website or like emergency uh, social media channels which are just setting up that bit of information you may not be aware of but like emergency are established have established facebook and uh, twitter channels as well so they'll so all that's a good channel to follow for for all emergencies not just agency related stuff and in my experience a lot of the anxiety around social media is that idea that once you turn it on you will be drowned in a torrent of people demanding that you are available at 3 a.m every morning and you guys are already often quite available at 3 a.m. for the community's needs, you know. But you can defeat this through honesty. So, as Martin said, even our pages, which have paid staff monitoring them a lot of the time, just have really clear messages on them that are like, we're not looking at this all the time. Our Twitter account, which pumps the, the robot warnings, says very clearly on there, no, no person looks at this. Do not talk to this thing. You won't get a response. And that's, that's fine. So. Uh, you can quell that anxiety. If you look at this and go, look, we'd really like to do it, but we're, on, we're worried that we're only going to be able to respond to comments during training on Tuesday between 6 and 9, then just put up there, like, we only respond to comments between 6 and 9, and if, you want, if you're looking for this, go over there, and people will be quite uh, accommodating of that. Um, I just wanted to address an earlier concern about inaccurate information on Facebook. Um, I know at least a few of my friends have had people do things like duplicate their Facebook pages and you know, got pretty stressed out about that because someone's you know, pretending to be someone else and then of course giving inaccurate information. But to Facebook's credit, they're actually quite good at if someone is actually putting out in inaccurate information, they really get on it and 
you know, they'll slam those people and they'll block them off Facebook. So if people are putting out inaccurate information, you can actually contact Facebook mm. and they will respond. So Yeah, that's true. A few years back it was very difficult because they only really had staff in the States and, and but now they have a lot of staff. We all we do have direct contact with Facebook staff in Australia and New Zealand have quite a few staff as well. So if there is ever an issue of impersonation and it's you know it's a serious issue to do with your brigade, if someone set up a fake brigade page and was putting out uh, fake information, uh, you know, contact us at state level and we'll be able to make those contacts with Facebook and get those pages removed. If they're you know if they're deliberately fake, uh, just because you don't like some information that someone's publishing, Facebook won't remove that because they Facebook can't be the arbitrators of what's right and what's wrong in the sense of the information. But they, if someone is blatantly you you know pretending impersonating your brigade or impersonating you, uh, they will do something about that. Hi, Sharon from Monash, SES. I'm just wondering, in your opinions, are you aware of any successful Facebook pages and what is it that makes it successful? As in units of brigades who are doing good work? Yeah, units at unit level and, you know, just is it something that they're putting out that seems to make it very successful? They're getting a lot of likes? the communities at, uh, at, at work. <laughs> at, at Upway Fire Brigade, um, our page is, is very popular, um, has a very high level of engagement. Um, after this session, I am running a session on advanced Facebook and going through all of those um, little things that, that make a good page great, which is what it's called. Um, so yeah, but, but really, it's got to be relevant. Whatever you post has to be relevant to your community. Um, think about why should they follow your page? Um, if they should only follow your page to know when there's a fire or a flood, then that's boring. They're just not going to do it. So um, you want to be timely. You want to you want to uh, post content as often as possible, so long as it is relevant. And um, engagement with your community through that page is a two-way street. So you've got to post good content. But then when they respond and ask questions, you need to engage with them again. Uh, respond to them um, and that be a service uh, through Facebook to, to help them with, with any, anything they, they need. I think uh, if the, the SES units I see that do really well on uh, Facebook and there's ones that do consistently well and there's ones that have like, you know, uh, some of their content is amazing. I would say it's uh, it's authentic, and it's honest, and it's awesome, and it's fun, is the thing. So, the the units that consistently engage really well with their communities are units where, if you look at their Facebook page, you you cannot look at it and not come away understanding that that's a group of human beings who are meeting once a week to train, and they really care about what they're doing, and they're they're having fun, is the thing. Don't try to be uh, a business, you know, you're not a business. You're a group of people united by passion to make your neighbours' lives better, uh, and that's really powerful stuff. Uh, so you, you guys are playing with like a really stacked deck in terms of how to create good social media content because your existence is so amazing. Like, you're not going, how do we make Coca-Cola seem interesting to diabetes people? Like, you don't have to do that. You just have to go. Here's what we're up to. You know, diabetics. Exactly, diabetes people. <laughs> It was a long night, all right, there's a band, everything. Uh, but it's the thing, so like uh, if the unit unites for an evening to do sort of road crash rescue stuff, just getting photos of it and people smiling at cameras and that sort of thing, like big bright pictures of volunteers in uniform with their like smiling, can't go wrong. And just someone talking like, I am a person, this is what we are doing. Uh, and this is why we are doing it. And also, if anything you do ever involves an animal in any way, put it on the internet. Our uh, kids, yes, cute animals always work. But it, it, you, you're exactly right. If you if you love going to training every week, then show that through photos and your messages on your page. Um, you know, we can sometimes, um, you know, we know what training is like every week. We know what your know, brigade or unit life is like. Our Facebook fans don't know that. So even posting something about a meeting could be interesting, but yeah, have a lot of fun. 
And that's, that's um, I mean, you may think, oh, what's the, the community education value or the community preparedness value in that? But the point is, you can't just constantly preach to people. You have to, you know, have a bit of fun, give them interesting, fun stuff as well. So, and by doing that, you're building up credibility, you're building up followers. So when you do have to give them some really important, worthy information, they're going to say, okay, fair enough. I'll listen to this because they're not just constantly uh, preaching at me. If you want to do like a really quick and dirty recipe for a, a, a unit or brigade Facebook page, uh, set one up, post three things a week, make one of them a safety message written in sort of human being speak, like, hey, don't drive through flood water because one fact, uh, don't do it. Uh, one time a week, get one member, get a good photo of them, get them to write what, what's their name, how long have they been a member, why did they join and what do they like to do, and just put that up, that stuff's great. Uh, and then do one other thing, which these guys will say what it is. Okay, so, and we could spend a whole session on this sort of stuff, which is exactly why Ryan is doing a session uh, directly after this one on those sorts of tips, those sort of real practical tips about how you can make a, a good Facebook page better so that people that have Facebook pages are about to set them up, thinking about it uh, certainly worth attending Ryan's session. One, yeah, more one more question, question I'm afraid. Uh, if anyone else with other questions comes meet us after, speak afterwards. One way that you were talking about uh, websites versus Facebook page, and you're not very keen on websites. Um, what we did, we, we regenerated our website, made a brand new one, but we actually included the Facebook page as well to scroll. Not everybody's into Facebook, but they're into websites or vice versa. So we actually put the web Facebook page on our home page on our, on our website, so therefore they got both both worlds. So David, can we, can we get one more quick question then, if we plan to answer one? That's a, that's a good point, and Facebook is so easy to update content, you can embed that on websites, which means that it looks like there's, some, there's new stuff on the website all the time. Uh, as a modern uh, Facebook user, uh, I get the impression from you, what you guys are speaking and what I've heard before, that Facebook pages need to be updated pretty much constantly to keep them alive. Uh, my question is, how many enthusiasts do you need in a, a unit or a brigade to keep your Facebook page going? And how long do these people last? Because some of them are going to be enthusiasts on, on social media and they're going to go off and lose interest in the CFA or the SES and do something else. So that's my question. Yeah, look, great question. Um, it could just be one person. Depending on how enthusiastic that enthusiast is, um, you know, they could they could do the whole lot. Um, there might be burnout, um, and it, you know we we say um, update regularly. If that's once a week, then that's once a week. But if you can do it once a day or twice a day, then that's that's excellent. But at least do something. And if it means you can only do something once a week, you can only find content um, that often, then that's better than than nothing. Um, but certainly, if you know, I, I hear a lot of people saying, "Oh, well, what what lieutenant, what officer should should manage social media?" Because what what does it fall under? If you've got someone who's keen to do it, and they want to do it, and they understand the basics, give it to them. Yeah, I think that's all we have time for, folks. Uh, Steph and Ryan and myself, we we um, all have our standard. CFA and SES email addresses, m.anderson, r.vanderhorst. What's your uh, format in SES? Go media at SES, media uh, SES. if you have it's any social media. media. So you can certainly send us questions there and... Well, you yeah, could message our Facebook page, of course. Yep. Yeah. Go can, on SES link. Or you can speak to us afterwards. Or you can, and you can play us love songs on your phones as well. If you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. So one more round of applause for the three guys up the front here. Fantastic session, well done. Thanks for answering all the questions. So it's now morning tea time, so you can access morning tea out these doors. Please note it is a very short break and there is plans for a photo as well, but please make sure you have picked your session ready to go at five past, one of the six options at five past 11. Thank you.